talk about timing. Is this on? Uh, it feels like it's on. Okay, good to see all of you today. What a wonderful day. It's super sunny, and I like rainy ones too and snowy ones, but this is great. Hey, welcome. I'm Pastor Mark, and this is Pentecost Sunday. What a great Sunday it is, and it's Memorial Day weekend, and I have things to tell you. Next week, uh, the 4th of June, we're going to be having a business meeting right after the service. It's short and should be very straightforward, but I need to announce it for you. Um, I want to welcome all of our members, all of our attenders, and any visitors, and even first-time visitors. If you are a first-time visitor, I think there are some great little cards in here. You can fill them out. We'd love to get to know you. And uh, also, if you have any questions about the church, because it, I, I got to tell you, this is the most hilarious thing. I remember when I met my wife, and we were talking about the Covenant Church, and she said, well, what is the Convent Church? And it was hilarious. And so there are many misunderstandings about even names and, and who we are, what we believe. So uh, and we are fine. <laughs> At any rate, I, if you have any questions about what our church is, you can absolutely uh, talk to me after the service or any of our leaders or if there's some, a, a member of the church and they come up, you can go right up to them and say, hey, what's going on? And we can chat with you about that. Uh, the other thing that I wanted to tell you, somebody help me. It'll come to me. Okay, it, it will come to me. Come Maybe I'll share it later. later. That, that'll, that'll be great. Be great. Uh, oh, thank you very much. I was going to mention this one. We have our pastoral prayer, but Nona Michael uh, passed on Thursday morning uh, peacefully in uh, her son Eric's home. And uh, for the last, probably the last two weeks, she was fairly much not able to communicate with anyone but she passed very peacefully and they're they're excited about that because that was a that was a rough go for a while so uh, we need to be in prayer for the michael family and uh, we're thrilled at where nona is right now so with our lord i would like you that was it thank you very see isn't this great what a body we have farmers market uh, we'll be meeting uh, for the first time of the summer season on the 14th of June. And then we're going to kick off until probably October. And then I would love it. Oh, and hi. All of you folks at home. I feel like a romper room thing. I can see all you see Bobby and Billy and June and Sarah. No, anyway, it's, it's so much fun to be able to have this way to get together with all of you as well. And uh, many of us are gone. Um, I was telling Aaron this morning that I, I counted about 15 people that had told me they wouldn't be here for Memorial Day. And, uh, but that's totally fine. It's a wonderful chance to get away with our families. And some of you may want to um, watch this later. If you're watching this later, we had a great time today. <laughs> All right, if you would stand and this is a meet and greet time with each other and bless each other.
Okay, we're going to have our call to worship. I'll take the part of the leader, you take the part of the people. This is from Psalm 67. In fact, I think it's the whole psalm. May God be gracious to us and bless us and make his face to shine upon us. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. May God continue to bless us. Let all the ends of the earth revere him. Let the moon stand and let them sing number 61. Praise to the Lord the Almighty. standing for the reading of the gospel. Hear the word of the gospel this morning. Now we know that you know all things and do not need to have anyone question you. 
By this we believe that you came from God. Jesus answered him, Do you now believe? The hour is coming. Indeed, it has come, when you will be scattered, each one to his own home, and you will leave me alone. Yet I am not alone, because the Father is with me. I have said this to you, so that in me you may have peace. In the world you face persecution, but take courage. I have conquered the world. Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. You may be seated as we sing number 75, There is a Redeemer. for some kids today? I think I am. You know, today we have so many people that have gone away for the Memorial Day weekend. It's great. It's wonderful. But how awesome is this that we're still here? Isn't that great? Oh, awesome. And some of you are in the pews and you can enjoy it from there, okay? Well, I want to I want to talk with you guys. Today, the sermon that I'm going to give is called Ultimate Sacrifice. And I was thinking about that and what that means. And we're going to talk about Jesus giving his life for us. But I wanted to think about what would that be for you guys. And I want to tell you a story about my little sister. She's big now, but I'm three years older than she is, and when I was six years old, she was three, and we lived in Ecuador. Do you guys know where Ecuador is? It's in South America, and my parents were missionaries there, and we had a lady that worked with us and helped us clean our house, and my dad built her a house 
She didn't have a house, so he built her a house in the back of our house. My dad used to be a carpenter. It was the most awesome house. And so that's where that lady lived. And we used to get little dogs, and we had this little puppy that was so cute. He was so cute. And we'd play with him and pet him, and he was awesome. And then he got sick. Have you guys heard of rabies? Yeah. And a lot of, you probably know that if you see a dog somewhere and it's foaming and it comes up to you and it was always nice to you before and it goes, and it growls at you, you know, oh, I better go tell my parents so that they can come and take care of this guy because this is not a good thing. Our little dog, I was young. I was in first grade and my little sister was in like a preschool. And so she saw our little dog, she goes, and she goes toward him, and he goes, and she didn't back away because it was her dog. And the dog was never unfriendly to her. And this lady who lived in the back of our house said, oh, Marcita, Marcita, que no, que no, que no. That means, Marcia, no, no, don't go, that dog is, has rabies. And she dove in front of my sister. And the dog <laughs> bit this lady. Her name was Lilia, and she is so special to our family. She saved my sister, because my sister would have had to go to the hospital. And back then, I don't know how it is now. Maybe you guys know about this. But it was 15 or 16 shots in the stomach to help you not get rabies yourself. Isn't that amazing? I always thought of that. It's like the ultimate sacrifice. She threw herself in front of this dog to save my sister, and I thought it was so awesome. Isn't that a great story? I know. And it makes me want to do stuff like that for my friends, and even for you guys. Yes, Ethan. That's right, did you guys hear him? Sometimes when you go to save people, you get hurt yourself. So that's like a real sacrifice, isn't it? And if you really love and care for them, you want to help them, it doesn't even matter what happens to you. And that's what Jesus did for us. He came and he gave himself for us to save us. Oh, let's pray. Lord Jesus, thank you for being that sacrifice for us, an ultimate sacrifice. You gave yourself. You died, but then you were on a cross and you came back to life. And you saved us and we can pray to you still today. It's so wonderful. Thank you for everything you've done. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen, Everett. Okay. And Litty, Litsy, and Bert. We're going to sing to dismiss you. Okay. This is, this is a wild day because all of our worship team are gone, and so we're kind of your worship team today. But we're having a good time. Today, I want to start the message by saying we're starting it, <laughs> and it's Pentecost Sunday, but I, I wanted to bring up Aaron to read us the scripture because I want this scripture to be part of the whole message instead of saying, do you remember when we read the scripture? I really want this to be part of the message.
Romans 8, 14 through 39. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received a spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if, in fact, we suffer with him, so that we may also be glorified with him. I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory about to be revealed to us. For the creation waits with eager longing for the revealing of the children of God. For the creation was subjected to futility, not of its own will, but by the will of the one who subjected it, in hope that the creation itself will be set free from its bondage to decay and will obtain the freedom of the glory of the children of God. We know that the whole creation has been groaning in labor pains until now. And not only the creation, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, grown inwardly, grown inwardly while we wait for adoption, the redemption of our body. For in hope we are saved. Now hope that is seen is not hope. For who hopes for what is seen? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. For we do not know how to pray as we ought, but that the very Spirit intercedes with sighs too deep for words. And God, who searches the heart, knows what is the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. We know that all things work together for good for those who love God, who are called according to his purpose. For those whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, in order that he might be the firstborn within a large family, and those whom he predestined, he also called. And those whom he called, he also justified. And those whom he justified, he also glorified. What then are we to say about these things? If God is for us, who is against us? He who did not withhold his own son, but gave him up for all of us, will he not with him also give us everything else? Who will bring any charges against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is to condemn? It is Christ Jesus who died, yes, who was raised, who is at the right hand of God, who indeed intercedes for us. Who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will hardship or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, for your sake we are being killed all day long. We are accounted as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life. Nor angels, nor rulers. nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Thank you, Aaron. I don't pretend to know 
what just happened to Aaron at the end of that reading. It, oh, do you want me to bring this back? No. Okay. But I'll tell you, that has also happened to me in this reading when I was at home. It is so powerful. This scripture is so powerful. I've shared with you before that sometimes when I'm preparing a message and I'm supposed to read a pericope, that's, that's a passage, a little bit of the scripture. I can't stop reading. I start to get excited about the word and what the Lord is giving to me that I just keep going. And I'll find myself going to the end of the chapter, to the next one, the next one, and I go, oh, wait, 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 what am I doing? Of course, it's a big blessing, but I'm trying to prepare a message. Now, did you notice how long this passage was? We're going to be here till about 2.30 as I preach on all of it. <laughs> you know I'm kidding. What an incredible passage. I got to tell you, Greg Sager and I, and those of you who go to the Thursday night studies, oh my goodness, he has got a mind that is just incredible when it comes to things in scripture, historical things, archeological things that relate to scripture. It's just a thrill. Any of you who have not gone should go. But we, we looked at it and said, oh, we need it shorter for this Sunday. And we couldn't cut anything out. <laughs> we thought, well, if we cut this part out, well, then this, well, ah, ah. And it's the difference, I think, that between some of the other biblical references and the massive tome that is the book of Romans. Some other epistles, even written by Paul, this one was written by Paul to the church at Rome. Some other epistles have almost like bullet points. Greg and I were talking about that in the office. They have bullet points. You can pick out one or two and use them for your two, three-point sermon and just address those. Yet this one we found was an interwoven, those of you who have been to the Thursday night class know that he uses this terminology, an interwoven vine with little vines here and there, and they all intersect. It is a massive theological treatise. It's a wonderful piece of erudition of the Holy Spirit breathed text. That class I was telling you about on Thursday night, Greg told me just this past week, he said, you know, we took on Romans, and you guys know it's 16 chapters. It took 10 months to go through the book of Romans, meeting every Thursday night. Can you imagine? It's that, I use these words, it's dense. It's so full of truth and wonderment. And the reason I asked Aaron to read this right as we got started is I wanted this so fresh in our minds. And I've gone through, and don't worry, it's not going to be tremendously long, but I've, I've looked at some of these verses, and I, I start to get, <laughs> you know me, I start to get all excited. But we have verse 17, speaking of Christ's suffering. Right as it starts, we're looking at it. And here we have, considering the sufferings of this present time, they're not worth comparing with the glory that is going to be revealed to us. The creation waits with eager longing for the revealing of the children of God. And then it goes on in verse 19 through 21 and speaks to the suffering that creation is having. And that means... All of us, we're, we're all part, part of God's, God's creation, creation, but also all of his created things. I'm not going to get into any kind of a political thing on global warming today, but I think if we just stand back and look, we can see amazingly difficult things happening with the globe. You know, there are passages, and I'm not going to cite them today because it'll just take us too long. But there will be wars and rumors of wars, you know, before Christ comes again. And then we have the storms and tempests 
of hurricanes, tornadoes, flooding, fires. It's just, we have that, we've always had that, but it's just like, what is this complete concentration that we have on it right now? It can really get us distressed if we're not careful. We need to remember it when we're feeling like we're the only ones suffering in this world and we're in abject despair to the grief of our world. And it's a reason that I have hope and continue in prayers for all of us and for everything. I just want to read once again verses 22 to 25 out of chapter 8 of Romans. We know that the whole creation has been groaning in labor pains until now. And not only the creation, but we ourselves who have the first fruits of the Spirit groan inwardly while we wait for adoption, the redemption of our bodies. For in hope we were saved. Did you hear that? In hope we were saved. Talks about the groaning and the anxious nature of things, but in hope we were saved. Now hope that is seen is not hope for who hopes for what is seen but if we hope for what we do not see we wait for it in patience so often i've talked about how much we pray and we're praying and we're praying and we're praying, and we're praying for people a little bit later we're going to pray as a church for some of the same people we keep praying for why because we're supposed to do that and there are answers to those, to those prayers. prayers. Then, then what, what follows this up? up? Verse 26 to 27. Likewise, Likewise the Spirit, the spirit, spirit helps, helps us in our weakness. weakness. So, so when, when I, I say, say we need to have hope, hope but, but we're weak, weak right? We think, oh, I'm, I'm so, so tired, tired of this. this. I'm, I'm so, so sick of praying and praying. And, and is, is God, God, hello, God, God? do you hear me? I'm crying out to you. And then it talks that we are, we are supposed, supposed to, have to have this hope. hope. Flesh, Flesh is willing. Is, willing. is that right? right? The spirit is willing. The flesh, the flesh is weak. We can't. We just can't keep that patience that it says to wait in. Likewise, the spirit helps us in our weakness when we cannot be patient. For we do not know how to pray as we ought. But that that very spirit, spirit, the Holy Spirit, Spirit intercedes intercedes with with sighs sighs too deep deep for words. I don't know if you've ever experienced that. that. It's It's a wonder. wonder. And And God, God, who who searches searches the heart, knows what is the mind of the Spirit, spirit, because the Spirit spirit intercedes for the saints according according to the the will of God. The Holy Holy Spirit Spirit himself himself intercedes for us. And this is when we just get utterly frustrated. And then then what what follows? I think think one of the the greatest greatest passages, passages, at least for me, in in all of Scripture. And And we know know that in all things God works together together for good good of those who love him, him, who have been been called called according according to his purpose. If I was in a Sunday Sunday school class, I'd say, repeat repeat after me. And then we'd say, Lord, may that be so. May that be so for me. I say say this this all the time time when when I go go through through something something horrible. And I think, think, how did this this happen to me? To me. me. (laughs) And then I find this passage, or it comes comes right into my my head, because I've been saying it to myself for years. Some good's going to come out of this. This was awful. Doesn't mean it was the Lord's will that this would happen to me. And it was awful. God is going to redeem this. Something good is going to come from it. Then verses 33 to 35, you're going, wow, Pastor Mark, you're really moving along fast. (laughs) Who will bring any charge against God's elect? We are God's elect, aren't we? Who is to condemn It is God who justifies. It is Christ Jesus who died. Yes, who was raised, who is at the right hand of God, who intercedes for us. And then that verse. Who will separate us from...
from the love of Christ. Who can do that? No one can. Will hardships or distress? No. Or persecution? No. Or famine or nakedness or peril? No. Or the sword? You might add for today, the knife, the grenade, the rocket, propelled grenade, the missile launches, the tanks, the bullets, the guns. No one can separate us from the love of Jesus Christ. And then I love and am flipped out by the next verse, verse 36. And I have to imagine the Jewish nation during the Holocaust saying this verse because it's taken out of the Old Testament, something that they had. And I have to imagine that the Ukrainians are praying this all the time. And that is what comes in verse 36. For your sake we face death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. It could just bring absolute weeping as we think about that and what that means. But then this, and it's the confidence that we have. And I'm going to read those last three verses that close out this message. No. In all things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Oh my goodness. Amen. Right? Oh, this is fantastic. This is the good news that we came to hear today. This is what we want. And at the same time, it's Memorial Day today, isn't it? You know what Memorial Day is. It's the day when we go out and picnic, watch the Indy 500, hang out, have barbecue, we do all those things. I have no judgment against that. That's a wonderful time to have a family time. And at the same time, we see words and images of never forgetting, and we never should forget. I like this because it helps us not just use our holiday for all those things I've talked about. And it's okay to do that, have a nice three-day weekend. Yet it is also very good to be able to have a time of reflection, at least at some point during the weekend. Maybe this is our time right now. Years ago on a Friday night, Allie and I were driving around downtown Chicago. We came across an image. We had some guests from out of town. You know how you drive them around because we've got the greatest architecture in the world, right? It's pretty awesome going downtown. And we saw on one of the buildings a familiar script emblazoned in the lights of the building. You know how they do that? They, they use certain office lights and it said, some gave all. And this is Memorial Day. We're honoring those who have given all. I mean, given their lives in an ultimate sacrifice. Veterans Day in November is kind of akin to this day, yet it honors even those who are still alive and those who are veterans of wars and service. But I want to extend this a bit today because there are other effects of war on us and on all of us. Those who have lost loved ones and must go on. We're the ones who are still here. And I believe that the older we get, the more we're in touch with this. And I say this because I now think of this very personally. I have connections through family and friends to a number of world conflicts that our nation has been involved with. And it's important to remember a bucket list 
is visiting our nation's memorials. I have visited the military cemetery of my father-in-law, the Korean Memorial in Washington, D.C., the Vietnam Wall Memorial in Washington, D.C. I've done these a couple of times now. And even just this month, in 2018, I flew with my father on one of those flights where they honor World War II veterans. And we went and saw the World War II Memorial and the Air Force Memorial. And if you bear with me, I'd like to just share this with you as a sort of tribute to those who have given so much for us. My uncle, Colonel Richard P. Fulmer, was in the U.S. Army. He was in the battle in the Philippines. You know what happened there. Many of them that were not killed were taken on the Bataan Death March. My uncle was on that death march. He watched as people were macheted and skewered and killed because they couldn't keep going. They had to eliminate the weak ones, and they did. And my uncle saw it. I know about this because, you know, World War II vets don't talk about it a lot, but he would wake up screaming in the night in Japanese because he was a POW for three and a half years of World War II. My dad's sister, my aunt, met Richard Fulmer in a military hospital ship and literally, literally nursed him back to health. Can you imagine waking up and seeing my aunt, who was kind of a nice looking lady, and he goes, am I in heaven? <laughs> And, and it was, it was like, like the movie. movie. And, they and they fell in love, love and were married. married. My, my father-in-law, father Ali's dad, dad was in the US Navy in the Normandy, Normandy invasion. Those, Those images, images are forever are with him. him. He, he was, was on an LST. LST. He, had he had been in the submarine that, that, that day they put him, him, or those days they put him on an LST, and he would go up and rescue and pull out the wounded and pull out the dead. Days later, when they cleared all the mines, he walked along there and found all of these soldiers in foxholes with a bullet straight through their head. And I remember when he did tell me that, I said, how did that happen? And he said, the Germans in their sniper positions had time, months to get ready, and they sighted in right where our guys would be. And when they popped their head up to see if they could get out and run, boom. 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 My, My father-in-law father never forgot that. that. That's, That's probably, probably the only, only time he talked to me about it. Years, years later, later, I saw Saving Private Ryan, Ryan. And, there's and there's a moment, moment when, when something like that happens in there, and I just lost it. Fortunately, Fortunately I was watching on DVR, I could pause it. It was hard to get through. My, My father, father was in a P-38 squadron, squadron in the South Pacific, Pacific and the U.S. Army Air Corps. And we, we, forget we forget about the terror of war. You know, people come home, and as a kid, I wanted to hear, Dad, tell me about those planes. Tell me, you know, you're a kid. You're playing Army. Tell me about it. I remember being in Ecuador and hearing machine gun fire when there was a coup, a revolution. I didn't have to go to school, so it was cool. <laughs> And you, and you could hear, hear. I said, Dad, 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 was that a machine gun? And he looked at me and he goes, yes, Mark, it was. Very seriously. And I suddenly realized, without him even saying anything more, I shouldn't be all excited about that. And then we could look out of my balcony and watch people shooting and killing each other in the canyon behind our house. And suddenly, this was not something cool. For me. My dad, dad did share with me one time that as he was walking through the jungles, because he did the island hopping, he heard, he kept walking a little bit, somebody was tracking him through the jungle. So he turns after it went on quite a bit and he was unnerved and he said, stop and identify yourself. He yelled it again. 
There was no sound. He walked a little bit more. There was more sound. He says, identify yourself. Since there was nothing, he just strafed the jungle with his machine gun. And I said, Dad, did you go in there and check it out, make sure what had happened? He said, absolutely not. There was no more sound, and he kept going. This kind of terror for him lasted when he came back. His father was a covenant pastor in California. And my dad came back, and he'd sit in the back pew because he could not sit through a service. He had all that PTSD. Friend of mine, Rob Applegate, was in Vietnam. He has wounds. He still carries shrapnel. He was out on a patrol, and they would go in groups of three, and one of them stepped on a mine. Both of his friends were killed, and he survived. I have many friends who were in Vietnam. That's kind of my era. Others signed up for multiple tours, and still others died there. My brother-in-law, Chuck West, served over there as well. Even more recent are the Iraq and Afghanistan vets, and I meet many of them on the streets. I also have a friend whose son-in-law is now suffering from PTSD from time that he spent over there. My daughter has a good friend she stays in touch with, and he continues to serve in Iraq. And we always call him Sam, the military man. We pray for him. And I want to go a step further this morning. You're thinking, okay, what is this? Is this a, a little side piece? But there's a reason I'm talking about this. When I was in seminary, Allie and I knew we were going to Columbia. And that place at the time we went was very hostile. They had the drug lords, Pablo Escobar, the uh, Ochoa brothers. I mean, this was big time narco problems. We had threats against us once we got there. A uh, lot of different things happened. So I took a course from Dr. Arthur Glasser, who had been a chaplain in the Marine Corps in World War II. During one of his classes, oh, his class was called The Church in the Hostile Environment. I thought, this is a perfect class for me to take. And what he did in that class was amazing. Because as we see ourselves honoring our nation's dead, this took it to the next level for me. He said that when he stormed the beach, and he was a chaplain, he came up, came over a berm, dove into a foxhole, got up again, kept going up, charging up this beach. Tanks had come before him, and he noticed a tank tread going up. And, and there was, was a man's, man's arm there, there that had been, been crushed. crushed. And, it and it was a Japanese, Japanese soldier. And, and clenched in his fist was a New Testament. Testament. This, this Japanese, Japanese man was, was a Christian. Christian. He, he was, was one, one of our brothers, brothers in Christ. Christ. And, and I have, I have never, never been the same for hearing that story. Because I thought sometimes, what are we doing as we fight? against war has been a difficult thing for me to get through i'm not a pacifist but i'm also not a hawk this is events for me because i during the vietnam war i qualified to be a navy pilot yeah like one of those top gun things that was like still cool for me you know like and I, and I took, took out of out Alameda, Alameda Naval, Naval Air Base, Base I, I took a plane up, up did barrel rolls and loops. I had on the full flight suit, suit, the helmet, the parachute. parachute. I mean, I was cool, you know? You know? Everything, Everything I wanted, I wanted to, be to be as a little, little kid, kid. Nah, I, got I got to do that. that. I was, I was pumped, pumped, so excited. So excited. And, we and we landed. landed. And what happened? The, the lieutenant, lieutenant commander, commander said, Mark, Mark so you're, you're willing, willing to, to sign up for another, another four to four six years, years now? now? And, and I looked at him straight on, and I said, no, I don't, I don't think, think so. so. He says, what? You've, you've taken, taken all the physicals. physicals. You've, you've flown, flown. You've qualified. qualified. You've taken, taken all the written exams, exams and you don't, don't want to do this now? I said, I can't imagine dropping napalm on people. I can't imagine doing this. 
I'm interested in the mechanics of planes and how cool they are. I don't want to have a part in this. And he just looked at me and said, okay. I know we're celebrating those who have given their lives, but some, even of our enemies, follow the same Jesus Christ. And we need to look at our scriptures, don't we? Some gave all. Remember that thing that I saw downtown? But one gave everything. Ultimate sacrifice. And you see, he died for the entire world. You learned this in Sunday school, didn't you? For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. Whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. And, and you know, you hear it and you go, yeah, yeah, I've heard that, I've heard that, I've heard that. But think about what that means. Giving all. Loved what Ethan said this morning. Sometimes when we try to give all, we, uh, we get hurt ourselves. Sometimes that can happen. It happened to our own Christ. He died for all of us, no matter what our country, beliefs. After a victory, there are no enemies, only men and women. Napoleon Bonaparte said that, reprimanding a soldier who was showing disrespect and looting bodies of dead Englishmen on the battlefield. Sometime, I would say, try visiting memorials from other countries. Some of our past presidents have done that, one visiting Hiroshima. I've done so in Colombia. The Battle, La Batalla de Bogotá, the Boyacá, the battle for Boyacá coming into Bogotá. This is for the liberation under the Spanish rule. It is, <laughs> we took Ali's father there, and as I translated for him from the Colombian tour guide, I looked over at her dad and he was just sobbing. Hearing the stories from other countries. I've been to memorials of the Falkland Islands in Argentina which they call Las Islas Malvinas. War is hell. Jesus did another thing for us. He gave us a scripture, and that's the one that we read this morning, out of John 31 to 33. And he says, in this world you will have trouble, but take heart. I have, and I love this version, they're both great, but I have overcome the world. I have won it all. You don't have to worry about it. I've got this. You ever hear people say that to you? Don't worry. I've got this. And you just go, thank you. We will always have strife and conflicts in the world. Great. But he's going to take care of it. Take heart. I have overcome the world. I would like to, we're not necessarily singing this. If you get the drift of it as we go through, you can join me, but I am going to give you the words to it. This is out of John 14, 23, and I'm just gonna read that for you. Jesus answered him, those who love me will keep my word and my father will love them and we will come to them and make our home with them. I'm, I'm gonna drop down a little bit. That's just to give you some context. He says, I have said these things to you while I am still with you, but the advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the father will send in my name will teach you everything and remind you all that I've said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Don't let your hearts be troubled. I'm going to sing this. I don't need to be singing a solo up here, but I would love it if you would join me as you get the drift of it. 
because peace give I to thee. Not as the world gives, give I to thee. Peace give I to thee. Kind of easy, right? And the next one will be hope give I to thee. Not as the world gives, give I to thee. Hope give I to thee. And then love give I to thee. Not as the world gives, give I to thee. Love give I to thee. And if we're really getting into it, we'll go back to the peace. Peace give I to thee, not as the world gives, give I to thee. Peace give I to thee, hope give I to thee, not as the world gives, give I to thee. Hope give I to thee. Love. Love give I to thee. Not as the world gives, give I to thee. Love give I to thee. Peace again. Peace give I to thee, not as the world gives, give I to thee. Peace give I to thee. Amen, Lord. May it be so. May you always have our back because we know we will have trouble in this world. Yet you have overcome the world. You have conquered, and we can trust in you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. In your name we pray. Amen. Amazing love. How can it be? Please stand and sing number 306.
let us approach that throne of grace to bring our prayers and supplications to the Lord. Lord Jesus, thank you. Thank you for these wonderful worship songs we have this morning and this one by Isaac Watts that we just sang. What an incredible testament to you. What an incredible testament to you written so many years ago and it still rings true. Just like your word written even longer ago rings true and continues to ring true even more and more as we go through time, your time. Father, allow us to be always at your beck and call. Allow us to always say, what must I do? How can I follow you and seek you more clearly, more dearly, more wonderfully? Thank you, Lord, for your ultimate sacrifice that makes our being here today possible. Lord, with all of that gratitude that we have this morning, we know that you listen to us. It gets crazy sometimes. We get frustrated, yet you, as we cry out, Abba, Father, you give us those words of utterance so that we can worship you, praise you, and plead and ask you to answer our prayers. And our prayers this morning continue for Nicholas Arden and for the whole Arden family. Lord, hold him in your care. Grant him healing. Care for him. Thank you. For Messian Burgos. Thank you, Lord. Sometimes we just mention these names and those of us who know more can repeat those requests silently. For the Kosaches, for Frank, and for Vera, his mother. Be with them. For James Egan, for Pedro Gomez, for Art and Rosa Hamilton, maybe watching us now at home. Lord, grant Art that healing and walk with Rosa as she cares for him. For the Michael family, Lord, now that you have received Nona into your arms in heaven, be with them because they're suffering that separation now, that earthly separation. For Kathy Sager, for Mary Smith, Steve Starson, Lord, watch over him, keep caring for him. And Lord, we pray this morning for Philip, son to Iris Velez. Iris with us here this morning. Lord, we pray that you would heal Philip and work in his spirit and in his whole body. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Lord, today we pray for the Paul Carlson Partnerships. Those are people that are recipients of so much medical and agricultural reforms that the Covenant Church has been doing in the name of Paul Carlson, a martyred covenant missionary from 1964. Lord Jesus, we ask for those people in the Democratic Republic of Congo that you would bless them this even this morning. For Carlos and Karen Faco serving in Ecuador, a country near and dear to many of our hearts and even especially mine, Lord. Bring what Carlos and Karen need for today. Guide them. Don't let them be lonely. Watch over them. And Lord, we are not lonely because we have you and your presence. And you, years ago, would walk our own earth here that you created with your disciples and even at one point teaching them to pray just as you do to your Father, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever.
command. Now, if we could continue in our spirit of worship this morning and worship through our gifts and our giving, I'd ask Don to come up as our usher today. we do praise you father son and holy ghost triune god and you are one lord receive please these gifts that we give in joy and gladness as happy givers and that it may be a wonderful fragrance to you and a wonderful way to multiply all of the efforts that we do in your name we ask this in your holy name amen Please remain standing as we sing our last song, number 279, for your gift of God the Spirit, and we'll sing verses 1, 4, and 5.
Today, we are having coffee and some snacks down in the basement right after the service. So that'll be a wonderful, welcome thing. Also, I wanted to, uh, to tell you, this is something that we have been working on for a while, and we want to offer prayer for anyone who would desire it after the service. And I can pray for you and or uh, one of the leaders, and uh, that can be just right up here in front, or if you're not comfortable being right out here, we could go to a back room there, and that is available to you if you should so desire. The other thing I'd like to say is this is Pentecost Sunday. That's when the Spirit came down, and everybody thought it was just for the Jewish Christians at that time following Christ, and it launched, and thousands came to Christ in one fell swoop. And how did that happen? The Spirit descended as fire on people's heads, and they all were speaking in their languages, and people could understand them. And they were like, what is going on? This is our Lord. It's our Lord Jesus Christ. It's his Father. It's the Holy Spirit. And it is for all of us. So there are not separations of people. We are all one huge family under Christ and in our Lord Jesus Christ. So with that, please go forth to love and serve our Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. Mm -hmm. 